So we are going through all of the Magic the Gathering Brothers War cards. The full set is revealed. We have 290 cards to go through. We've done white, we've done blue, we've done black, we've done red. There's some really cool cycles in this set. Now we're on to green. Um, let's just jump right into it. Uh, first up, we have Alloy Animist. For one green, you get a 1-1 one, one human druid creature with two and a green until end of turn target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 4-4 four, four artifact creature. Interesting. Cool. Next up, we've got Argothian Opportunist. Two and a green for a 3-2 human scout. When Argothian Opportunist enters the battlefield, create a power tapped Power Stone token. Again, Power Stone tokens uh, are artifacts with tap to add colorless mana. This mana can't be spat, spent to cast non-artifact spells, so it can't be cast. It can't. You can't use it to cast instants or sorceries, um, and you can't use it to cast non-artifact creatures. But you can use it to pay for taxes. You can use it to pay for ward. You can use it to pay for artifact creatures. You can use it to pay for activated abilities. There's lots you can use them for. They're going to be powerful, um, hence their name, Power Stone Tokens. Next, we have Argothian Sprite. Oh, a new fairy. One and a green for a 2-2 fairy creature. Argothian Sprite can't be blocked by artifact creatures. And you can pay seven to put two 1-1 one -one counters on the sprite. So it can play early game as a 2-2 that can't be blocked by artifacts. And it can also grow up uh, in the late game and become... Uh, you know, every seven mana you pump into it, it gets too, too bigger. So for seven mana, it becomes a 4-4. Four, four. 14 mana becomes a 6-6. Six, six, that kind of thing. Not too bad. Uh, for next up, we have Audacity. The Audacity. For one green, you get an enchantment aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and has trample. When Audacity is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Not bad. Then we have Awaken the Woods. X green green for sorcery. Create X one one green forest dryad land creature tokens. They're affected by summoning sickness, it says. Interesting. Forest dryad land creature tokens. Huh. I wonder... I don't see... I wonder if there's a list published of Brothers War Tokens. The Tokens of Brothers War. Forest Try... Okay. So the Forest Dryad is, it doesn't say it on here, on this card, but a Forest Dryad, I'm just going to drag it over here. It's not zoomed in because it's a tiny card because the Magic website is terrible and doesn't upload large res versions of their cards, but... A Forest Dryad token is a token land creature that is a 1-1 one, one that can tap to add green. So it is a mana dork. Um, and Awaken the Woods, you create X-1-1 one, one green Forest Dryad land creature tokens with Summoning Sickness, but they can tap next turn for mana. So... On turn seven, you can effectively double your mana for turn eight. Even even on turn three or four, like you're putting t one or two forest dryad land creature tokens. That's such a mouthful. Uh, onto the battlefield. That's really good. I like that. That's a cool ramp. We, we haven't seen anything quite like this um, where you get to decide how much how many mana dorks you make. That's really cool. Next up, we have Blanchwood Armor. Two and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchanted enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each forest you control. 
So all of the colors have a care about how many of the certain color land you control. And the green one is an enchantment. And your creature gets bigger for each forest you control, which is pretty cool. Makes a lot of sense. When I saw this art, um, I saw this card, Blanchwood Armor, and I was like, oh, no, not another green armor card. Because the D&D set had, or the, it wasn't D&D, it was the Innistrad block last year that had a green armor um, artifact, an equipment, and they printed it in both sets. So by the time you had played through both sets, you had 40 of these artifact equipment pieces. And it was just so annoying because it was a common. This is uncommon at least, and it cares about your force. Moving on. Blanchwood Prowler. One in a green for a 1-1 one, one elemental creature. Uh, oh, this is the self-mill card for green. Cool. Back to back. When Blanchwood Prowler enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among them uh, into your hand. If you don't, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Blanchwood Prowler. That's pretty good. Next up, we have Borrowing Razor Maw. Two and a green for a 4-2 creature beast. Beast. When, burrow, when Burrowing Razor Maw dies, mill four cards. Lots of mill so far in green. We have Bushwhack. Look at this pun. Look at this punny name. This bush is whacking them. Bushwhack. For one green, sorcery, choose one. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shovel. Or target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. One mana fight card. Nice. Uh, not bad. Next up we have Sitinal Stalwart. Sitinal. My brain wants that to be Sentinel, but it's Sitinal Stalwart. One in green for a 1-1 one, one elf druid soldier. You can tap it to... You can tap it and tap an untapped artifact or creature you control to add one mana of any color. Pretty good. Not bad for a little mana dork. It's better than the Dominar United one drop in green, which was completely useless. Next up, we have Epic Confrontation. For one and a green sorcery, target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. Then it fights target creature you don't control. So we've got two fight spells already. Both of them are fight spells and not deals damage. So your creature will be affected by the fight as well. Um, but it's also sorcery speed, so you have to do it pre or post combat. Um, and your creature gets plus one, plus two. So that's pretty good. Next up, we have Fade from History. I saw this card previewed on Twitter, and this is brutal. Brutal. Fade from History is two green green for a sorcery. Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates one 2-2 two, two bear token, then destroy all artifacts and enchantments. This is a pure board wipe. Um, I think there's been a board wipe in all th four co five colors so far. This one is exceptionally savage because it destroys all artifacts and enchantments, not just creatures. Um, actually not creatures at all, but if you're playing a mono green stompy deck or a gruel stompy deck where you care about creatures and uh, everyone else is going to be playing artifacts and enchantments because that's kind of what the set is about. Um, it's also what is very popular in standard right now. Um, this is going to wipe everything. The consolation prize is you get one, two, two bear. And then every other artifact and enchantment is dead, and all of your creatures survive. Um, assuming you're playing a creature-heavy deck. If you're not playing a creature-heavy deck, maybe don't play Fade from History. Maybe sideboard Fade from History. Um, but that is uh, exceptionally savage, like uh, Popper said there. That is intense. Next up, we have Vlogi Excavation. Three green green for a sorcery. Create three power stone tapped power stone tokens. Gain three life. Five mana. Get three mana next turn and gain three life. Pretty good. Fog of war. 
Oh, we've got Fog of War. Is this going to be a fog effect? Two and a green for an instant. You gain one life for each creature on the battlefield. Then prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures with power three or less. Oh, so it's like a, a low to the ground fog of war or fog effect. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures with power three or less. So you can't avoid the big stuff, but you can avoid the little stuff, which is not bad. Next up, we've got Gaia's Courser. Look at that. Four and a green for a 4-5 Centaur Soldier. Centaur or Centaur? 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 Centaur Soldier. Whenever Gaia's Courser attacks, if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, draw a card. Oh my god, green's getting card draw for being aggro? That's great. That is great. Great card. Then we've got Gaia's Gift. One and a green for an instant. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. And it keep, gets to keep the 1-1. One, one. That is brutal. That, that is a good combat trick. Uh, they're reprinting Giant's Growth, which is great. Uh, one green for an instant target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. So what you do is you Giant's Growth, give it plus three, plus three, and then you Gaia's Gift. So it gets plus four, plus four, and has reached Trample, Hexproof, and Indestructible. Next up, we have Gnarl Root Pallbearer. Four green green for a 5-5 five, five tree folk druid with trample. When Pallbearer enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. It looks like it's a, a melding of a bunch of like bodies and stuff. It's gross. Kind of cool. It kind of rem reminds me of like Ren and Six or Ren and Seven. Ren and or its armor. Next up we have Gwena, Eyes of Gaia. I saw this card too and it very much excited me for green in this set. Um, which is very uncommon. Two and a green for a 2-3 Elf Druid Scout legendary creature. So because Mishra and Urzra... Urzra because Mishra and Urza are white, blue, and black, red, respectively, um, green they had to make up a lot of, not make up, but like make up a lot of ground uh, with green because they don't have either of the two faces of this war to call upon when it comes to legendary creatures. They're, they're posse, so to say. Um, and so there's a lot of cool... Creatures and characters like Gwenna here who we either have never heard of or are kind of supporting third-party figures in this huge war. Um, Gwenna reads, Tap to add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creature cards you control. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power five or greater... Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia, and untap it. You get to attack with it, and then untap it if you play something bigger than 5 power. That is great. And you get to tap Gwenna in order to cast the thing with 5 or more power. Because then you tap it to add 2 mana in any combination, spend it to cast your creature with power 5 or more, and untap it. You could do it again or attack with it. Crazy. Love it. Next up, we've got Hoarding Recluse. Three and a green for a 2-3 spider with reach and death touch. When Hoarding Recluse dies, put up to one other target card from a graveyard onto the bottom of its owner's library. Not great. You can't do that at instant speed unless you sacrifice it somehow, but um, pretty good. 
Pretty good. Obstinate Baloth. Obstinance is key, kids. Wait until marriage. Two green green for a 4-4 beast creature. When Obstinate Baloth enters the battlefield, gain four life. This is a reprint. Uh, pretty good card. People love it. If a spell or ability in opponent control causes you to discard Obstinate Baloth, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. So the fun thing is, is that this card is unpilferable. This is anti thought sees. You can't pick this card if you thought sees or pilfer your opponent, because if you do, it just goes straight onto the battlefield. Um, so you have to ignore this card if you're a pilfering type of player. Next up, we have Perimeter Patrol. Two and a green for a 3-3 human soldier creature. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, control gets plus one, plus O oh until end of turn. Not bad, not bad. Three mana for a 3-3, three, three, that's already pretty good. It's kind of got like fake prowess, almost. Uh, then we've got Sarinth Steel Seeker. Look at that. They've trained these snakes to hunt for robots. One and a green for a 1-2 human artificer scout creature. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. If you don't put the card into your hand, you may put it into your graveyard. Not too bad. Shoot down. Three and a green for a sorcery. Exile target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. That's great. Exile. So normally this is like a broken wings effect. Um, where you destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. And it's usually two and a green. Um... I also believe that it is an instant speed. Uh, broken Wings? Bro yeah, Broken Wings is an instant for two and a green. Destroy target artifact enchantment or creature. So what you're giving up in shoot down is one extra mana. And you have to do it at sorcery speed. But you get to exile it. So if it's their best card or their game plan, their game winner... You remove it from the game. It's pretty good. I like it. Next up, we have Taunos's Tinkering. Taunus's? Three and a green for an instant. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target artifact, creature, or land you control. Untap that permanent. If it isn't a creature, it becomes a 0-0 zero, zero creature in addition to its other types. Uh, so you can turn a land into a 2-2, two, two, or you can turn an artifact into a 2-2. Two, two. Or you can give a creature and or artifact creature 2-2 uh, two, two, in addition to its already established power and toughness. That's pretty neat. It's not great. Um, you know, it's kind of a fun combat trick. Say you have zero board presence and you just have some artifacts, some um, power stone tokens or something. And they keep attacking you with their like 1-1 one, one, or their 2-2. Two, two. You can cast this and animate your artifact and block and destroy their thing. Um, that's kind of cool. I like it. Teething Wormlet. Oh, look at this guy. What is he chewing? He's chewing on the top of something. And these birds aren't very happy about it. But he's so curious looking. Teething Wormlet is one green for a 1-1 one, one worm creature. Teething Wormlet has Death Touch as long as you control three or more artifacts. Interesting. I'm listening. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. If, the, if this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Teething Wormlet. So this is just um, Gala Greeters, but better, right? I don't... I don't know about you, but I am much more interested in a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch than I am making tapped treasure tokens. Plus, so many other things make tapped artifacts mana that this is just going to get bigger on its own. I don't know. I think this is better Gala Greeters. And then next up, we have the Green Meld. 
card. Titania, Titania, Voice of Gaia. For one green green, three four elemental legendary creature with reach. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, gain two life. So all of the mill, all of the self mill, land destruction, you gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard, and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia, and a, na a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, exile them and meld them into Gaia Incarnate. Now, I have the Argoth land in the land folder, so we're not going to see that quite yet, but we will see uh, the melded version of Titania in, at the end of this folder. So we'll go back to this when we meet. Um, maybe we'll jump over to the land real quick and take a look at it because we didn't see the last meld one either. So uh, so we've got the green command card is to Titania's command. Four green green for a sorcery, choose two. All of these command cards are sorcery speed. They're all very expensive, and they're all four options, but you can only choose two. So Titania's command says, Exile target player's graveyard. You gain one life for each card exiled this way, or search your library for up to two land cards. Put them into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, or create two, 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 two green bear creature tokens. Or put two one one counters on each creature each creature you control. So that's big. That is green doing stompy things. The nice thing about this though is that that second option, search your library for up to two land cards. So you can go find Argoth if you have Titania in your hand or already on the battlefield. Um, you can go find the legendary land that you need to meld with them. Um, yeah. Plus, you can control your opponent's graveyard and gain life at the same time. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have Tomacule Honor Guard. One and a green for a 3-1 human soldier with Ward 2. In the Great Desert, one law is enforced over all others. Water belongs to all. That's a pretty good rule for the Great Desert. People are probably thirsty there. Next up, we have Wasteful Harvest. Two and a green for an instant mill five cards. You may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. So this is also good because you need land cards in your graveyard to fuel Titania. This helps you mill. There's been a few green mill cards so far. So the plan is there. And these look like giant Urza mechs. These tiny little people here. People or fairies or humanoid creatures. Um to give you some scale. Once the brothers discovered the pristine island of Argoth, the war came down to who could plunder it faster. Oh no. Oh no. And we're getting into the green uh, artifact creatures. First up, we have Boulder Branch Golem. For seven colorless mana, you get a 6-5 artifact creature golem. With when Boulder Branch Golem enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its power. So you would gain six if you paid the full price. Or you can prototype it for three and a green, create a 3-3 three, three Golem with you gain life equal to its power when it enters the battlefield, so you gain three life. So pay four mana, gain three life, or seven mana, gain six life. Up to you. Then we've got Cradle Clear Cutter. This is a Mishra beast for sure. Uh, for six mana, you get a three six artifact creature golem with tap to add any amount, tap to add an amount of green equal to creator clear cutter's power, so three. Or you can prototype it for two and a green, you get a one three golem with tap to add one green mana. Not too bad. I like the modularity of these prototype cards. I feel like all of them have their place, all of them are good early and good late. Um, I haven't been up, I haven't been unimpressed with any of them so far. And we've got Haywire Might. One mana for a 1-1 one, one insect artifact creature. When Haywire Might dies, you gain two life. Pay one green to sacrifice Haywire Might. XL target non-creature artifact or non- 
creature enchantment. Oh, interesting. So you can pay it, pay one to cast it, and then immediately sacrifice it to exile something, a non-creature artifact or a non-creature enchantment that your opponent controls that you're worried about, and you immediately gain that to life. That's pretty cool. Then we've got Iron Craw Crusher. Iron Craw Crusher. Difficult naming convention, but okay. Seven mana for a 4-6 artifact creature worm. When Iron Craw attacks, target attacking creature gets plus X plus O till end of turn, where X is Iron Craw's power. So you can give it to any attacking creature, even Iron Craw. So it can become a 8-6 when it attacks. Or you can prototype it for 2 green green. It's a 2-5 that can become a 4-5 when it attacks. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mask of the Jade Crafter. 2 colorless for an artifact. Pay X. Tap. Sacrifice Mask of the Jade Crafter. Create an XX colorless golem artifact creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. And this artifact has unearth. So you can make two of these eventually, uh, depending on how much ma mana you want to sink into it. That's pretty neat. Next up, we have Perennial Behemoth. Five mana for an 2-7 artifact creature beast. You may play lands from your graveyard. And it has unearth for black black or black black for green green. I've literally messed up every color so far on this stream um this is cool i like this especially because once you um you know you start milling you start putting your cards in your graveyard because you want to meld titania and the legendary land um but once you do that you then maybe have a lot of lands in your graveyard that are just gonna be stuck there so you can play perennial behemoth then we've got the mythic green artifact creature root wire amalgam for five colorless you get a five five artifact creature golem at mythic for three green green sacrifice amalgam create an xx colorless golem artifact creature token where x is three times root walla's power root wire's power it gain haste it gains haste until end of turn activate only as a sorcery and you can prototype this for one and a green and get a two, three artifact creature golem. That's so aggro. So if you play this on turn two as a two, three, as soon as you hit turn five, you can sacrifice it and immediately get a six, six with haste. Or you play this on turn five. And then on turn six, you sacrifice it and you get a 15, 15 with haste. What? That can't be right. Three times root wire amalgam's power. Whoa. All of these mythic artifact creatures are crazy intense. This one is very, very intense. Um, next we have Rust Goliath for 10 colorless. You get a 10, 10 with reach and trample or for three green, green, you get a three, five with reach and trample. Not too bad. Then we've got Simeon Simulacrum for three colorless. You get a two, one artifact creature ape. When Simeon Simulacrum enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control, and it has two green-green to unearth it. Pretty good. Um, then the last card we have before we jump over to the meld card is Fauna Sham Shaman. Fauna Shaman. That's fun to say. Fauna Shaman. Fauna Shaman. Fauna Shaman is a 2-2 Elf Shaman with pay green tap to discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Wow. So you can just 
tutor for your best creature by discarding a shittier creature. That's pretty cool. And it's a 2-2 two -two for 2, so it's already just a bear. I mean, it dies to cut down, but it's pretty good. You want to play this on 3... No, you want to play this on 2 so you can tap it on 3. Interesting. Okay. So, as a reminder, we're going to find Titania. So, Titania says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 4 or more lands in your graveyard and you both own and control titania and a land named argoth exile them and meld them into titania gaia incarnate um the land is this argoth sanctum of nature it is a green land argoth sanctum of nature enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature which if you have titania on the battlefield you do it taps to add green you can pay two green green to tap it and create a bear creature token, then mill three cards, activate only as a sorcery. So this is great because it fuels the Titania because you need four lands in the graveyard in order to meld. Then once you've done all that, you've got four lands in the graveyard, you have Argoth on the battlefield and you have Titania on the battlefield. You meld them and it becomes Titania Gaia Incarnate. So you can see the seam in the middle of this image here. That's because it's two cards back to back. It's like this. You have two cards here, and then when you meld them, you flip them over and you put them top to bottom. So it makes one big card. And that's what you're looking at here. So it's meld, it's an older mechanic. Um, and they're bringing it back for this set because there's lots of powerful melding to do. It is a, a machine war. So Titania Gaia Incarnate is a legendary creature elemental avatar with vigilance, reach, trample, and haste. It's got all the things. Um, Titania Gaia's Incarnate. Gaia Incarnate's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. So it's a land matters creature. When Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So you can have 10 mana sitting in the graveyard. You meld. And then once Titania enters the battlefield, all of those lands come into the battlefield and then they grow even bigger because now all of a sudden you have more land. You can pay three and a green to put four 1-1 one, one counters on target land you control. It becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. So you pay four and you turn lands into four fours. I think this is really cool. Um, I'm really excited to make a mono green stompy lands matter deck. I think you put Ren and Seven to t Titania in there. If you want to splash blue, you put um, Tatiova in there because then all of your land creatures are, have flying. Um, I think that's really cool. This meld mechanic is really awesome. Um, I haven't been playing Magic long enough to have um, played with meld cards before, so I'm very stoked to collect and activate all of these meld mechanics. Uh, and that is it for green. Uh, next up, we are going to be moving over to multicolored. Um, but first, I wanted to take a few moments to run to the washroom, refill the water, stretch your legs a little bit. Um, we'll be right back. Take a three minute break and we'll jump into the multicolored cards of the Brothers War. Uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, I appreciate you watching this video. Um, Hit the like button and comment with your most excited, uh, with the card you're most excited about uh, from this green block. And we'll catch you all in a couple.